All right, welcome everybody. So, so in the next few videos, we're gonna start developing pairs, relations, functions, equivalence relations, a bunch of things that we need to start building from sets, right? We say that in set theory, everything gets built out just from the notion of sets um, that we define by the belongs relation, and we have nothing else, okay? So that means we have to build everything from scratch. So we're gonna start with um, some basic objects. So let's start with uh, what are called uh, order pairs. So an order pair is something of the form uh, x comma y, right? You've seen these guys before. Um, and what is the difference between this guy and this guy? This is the order pair and this one is the set. What is the difference between these two? The difference in the, between these two is that on the first one, the order matters, while on the second one, the order doesn't matter, right? So we have that um, x comma y is equal to a comma b, if, if and only if what? If and only if uh, x equals a and y equals b. But on the other hand, we have that x comma y set is equal a comma b set if and only if what x equals a a and y equals b or x equals b and y equals a right so in the set when we write the sets the order doesn't matter uh, but sometimes you want the order to matter right so um, what do we do? So far we only have sets, we don't have ordered pairs. We need to define them somewhat from the notion of sets. Um, so we're gonna do a little trick. So it's just a trick to make to, make, to now to have ordered pairs without having to introduce a new notion to the whole setting. We don't want, we want to introduce any new notion. We want to do everything just from sets and build from scratch. So here is the definition. So we define the pair x comma y to be the set that contains two sets. The first one is a set with only one element. It's called a singleton. Only one element, a single element. And the pair x comma y. Okay, so that's, um, I don't know if we have to close. So that's how we define the pair. We just define that funny set over there and then that funny set is gonna represent the pair. So for it to represent the pair, what do we need? We need to, to, to show that it that it satisfies what we want them to satisfy. Theorem. If the pair x comma y is equal to the pair a comma b, well, if and only if x equals a and y equals b. Okay, so that's what we want. We want them to be equal exactly when the first one is equal to the first one and the second one is equal to the second one. So First, let's make a comment before. So when we define this pair like this, uh, do we have, do we know that this guy exists? The, this um, order pair x comma y, do we know it exists? Yes, we know it exists because of the union axiom, right? Uh, no, sorry, the pair axiom. The pair axiom tells us that if you have two elements, we can build a pair, not an ordered pair, a set pair, right? So it tells us that we can build something like this, the pair axiom, but, but if you look at this guy that we define right here, what is that? What, I mean, it's a uh, it's a pair of pairs, right? So applying the pairing axiom a couple times, like three times, uh, we can build that set out of x and y, right? Okay, so once we know we can build the set, uh, those, that funny set using the pair axiom, now we ask, can we prove this theorem uh, from the axioms we have? And um, Yes, so all we have, the only axiom we have to use here is extensionality. The one that says that two sets are the same if and only if they contain exactly the same elements, right? If uh, x equals a and y equals b, then these sets are equal. This, right? So there is nothing to this to this proof. What about this guy? So now suppose um, this set x, x, y, equals a b and we want to show we want to show that x equals a and b equals b 
Okay, so in this case, uh, there is a funny case, which is when x equals y and a or a equals b. Let's start avoiding this funny case. So let's assume, um, for now, uh, that x different than y and a different than b. Just for now. And now we want to show that x equals a and b equals b. So what do we know? So let's call these guys some, num some names. Uh, let's call this guy uh, C and this one up here D. Okay, so what do we have? So we have that um, X belongs to C, which is equal to D and has has one element. So that means uh, it has to be X has to be one of those two guys uh, right here, which have only one element. Um, but the A comma B has two elements. So the only possibility is that x equals a, and those if those two sets are equal, it's because the members are equal. So from there we get that x equals a, and then x comma y belongs to c, which is equal to d. So it has to be one of those two guys, but it has two elements, and therefore it has to be that x comma y equals a comma b but we know that y we're assuming is different than x which is equal to a so if y belongs to the left hand side it has to belong to the right hand side and it cannot be a so the only way is a y equals b okay so that's how we get that um what happens if not so what if um x equals y well in that case in that case then we have that uh c that X, com x comma y is just the set sorry is the set x right because x and y are the same thing and therefore c like the set up here has both elements are x so I'll say the text so it's gonna be the set that contains the set that contains x and nothing else yeah, so it has C has one element. So C has one element. And then D has one element. Because they are the same. You assume they are the same. So that means that uh, A has to be equal to A comma B. But if A is equal to A comma B, the only way for that to happen is that because B has to belong to both sets, in that case, is that B equals A. Yeah, and then that means that the set D is equal to the set that contains A. And now we're assuming we're assuming that C equals D. So that means X equals A. But then X equals A. And then x equals a. And what about y and b? Well, we know we know that y. We're assuming that x is equal to x, which is equal to a, which we have up here, is equal to b. So also y equals b. So one way or another, we get that x equals a and y equals b. Okay. So I went uh, kind of. It's a it's a very simple argument. I went kind of quickly through it. Just like a pause the video, go through the arguments slow by slow, see if you can make sense of each step formally. Okay, good. We have a pair that, that, that behaves the way we want without having to define a new constructor. We just have a set constructor, and from the set, we define what we want. All right, so we, well, let's define one more thing. So that now that we have pairs, we can define the Cartesian product. The Cartesian product of um, two sets is what? The Cartesian product of A and B is written A times B is defined to be the set of all pairs X comma Y such that X belongs to A and Y belongs to B. Yeah, so that's um, 
how we usually uh, write, like draw as if you have x, a, put all the elements in, of a in a line, and all the elements of b in another line, all the points in the plane now represent points x, y, and the whole plane will represent a times b. Right? So it's a set of all pairs, first one from A, second one from B. So question, uh, does it exist? I mean, can we prove from the actions that we have so far that A times B exists? I mean, of course it exists. Um, the way we wrote this here, um, we are just taking X comma Y from where? We need to take, remember that to apply the subset axiom, we need to take them from somewhere. Yes, and here we're not taking them from anywhere. So we need to say um, x comma y that belong to uh, where to be able to apply the subset axiom. Um, so that then we can say x belongs to a and y belongs to b. Hmm. Any idea? Any ideas? Anybody? Okay. Here is the lemma that is gonna. If you have two elements that belong to a set C, in this case, let's say, well, then the pair x comma y belongs to the power set of C. No, not really. The power set of the power set of C. Does it make sense? Well, let's take a look at it. So, so we know um, x belongs to C. So, the set that contains only x is a subset of C, right? So this one belongs to the power set of C. And y belongs to C also. So from these two, the set that contains x and y is also a subset of C. Therefore, it belongs to the power set of C. Power set, remember, is a set of all subsets of C, right? And if these two guys belong to C, then the set that contains them both is a subset of the power set of C. So this one be, will, will belong to the power set of the power set of C. Cool. Okay, so that means that now we can define the Cartesian product up here as let's use the color that's gonna call our attention as x comma y that belong to the power set of the power set of C such that satisfying the property that x belongs to A and y belongs to B. Yeah? Uh, if you want to be very formal, just just for the first couple lectures, about what, how is that a first order formula? How is because here here we're using a, a construction, and this is not the way the form the, the set we have the this is not the way we apply the axiom. So let's do it again. So now I want to say that a times b is going to be the set of all z's which belong to a certain set, and the set is going to be power set of power set of C, which we know exists because we have the power set axiom, such that um, there exists an X, and there exists a Y, such that, such that X belongs to A, and Y belongs to B, and Z is equal to the set x, x comma y. Okay, so now this is something that we can write in um, in first order logic. Uh, so so we have that we can define a times b using the the subset action. Okay, so next time we're gonna see relations.